Hello there, my name is Kuma, and today we are having a close look at Cold Shot. Cold Shot is a welfare and the first operator in the Hunter class, a sniper class bearing quite a particular range in the new ammo mechanic. At first glance, we can notice a couple peculiarities. Her HP and defense stats are comparable to Schwarz, which is very high for a sniper. We only see spread shooters like Chen Alter with more HP and flingers like Rosmontes with a little bit more stats in both. Although defensive stats aren't the be all and end all for ranged classes, survivability can be quite comfortable. But there is something else that calls for attention. Her attack stat is very high. Not high enough to dethrone besiegers or dead eyes after you factor in potentials and trust, but you might be compelled by her ASPD. If you don't know any better, that is. Coach Shot's attack interval is 1.6 seconds, the same as heavy shooters like Acid Drop, which is faster than the classes I just mentioned. The problem is, this ASPD is tied to the new mechanic Hypergriff attached to the trait of the Hunter class. Hunters have an ammo clip. This clip can carry 8 bullets. When the hunter attacks, one bullet is used, and once the clip is empty, the hunter starts reloading one bullet at a time and shooting the single bullet they just reloaded. Here's the catch. The reload animation has a fixed interval and can only be affected if a particular skill says so. You cannot change it with attack speed modifications whatsoever not even ASPD debuffs. Now, don't be deterred by this information yet. I will show you how Cold Shot makes up for this. And after that, then you can make your judgment. Let's see this girl in battle. I like to group enemies in three categories. Low, middling, and high defense. And this does not include bosses. Bosses usually have more HP than normal, so we will talk about them later. Low defense enemies are mostly trash mobs, your everyday dog, foot soldier, croc, slug, or drone. With such a high attack, you might expect Cold Shot to be able to handle this, but that is not the case. Thanks to her trait, she cannot keep up with a high volume of enemies. Even if she one-shots them, she will be overwhelmed and let some slip by once she starts reloading. It's the same that happens with other low ASPD ops. It's not only a cold shot issue. Doesn't matter how strong you are, if you have more things to shoot at than you have stuff to shoot with. But there are some exceptions among the low defense enemies. Enemies with zero defense or close to that, but with very high HP. Elites like the Devourer in Chapter 11 who act more like a middling defense enemy usually walking alone in low-pressure lanes. This is what Cold Shot is good at, dealing with elites. If you deploy her on top of high-value, threatening enemies who can't do much to defend themselves against a long-range sniper, she will be wonderful, because if you can manage to set up, her initial damage output is quite fast. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's walk one step at a time. Among the middling defense enemies, you will have a hard time finding something Cold Shot can't deal with. Here you will see your everyday defender coming in a multitude of flavors and showing up in most events. Basically, anything around 800 defense is an ideal target for Cold Shot. Although some EX versions of the same defenders can be a problem if you don't take care of your setup correctly. Maybe you should remember that blocking is a mechanic that exists, instead of trying to leave Cold Shot alone like I did in these clips. What makes some of these red defenders a problem is their very high HP, coupled with them moving up to high defense enemies, and in this category, we have a problem. Usually, when I see people talking about high defense enemies, I get the impression that they are talking about the defenders I just showed you. Yes, Cold Shot can kill them easily, but I have to disagree and say, they are not high defense. 
I consider high defense enemies those with around 1300 defense or higher. There are some exceptions close to 1000, if they have enough HP to make up for it. When you ask Cold Shot to kill these enemies, she definitely can do it, but the problem becomes how long she takes to kill them. Operators with high attack are not always good for killing high defense enemies. If you need a full 40 second skill to kill one elite, you will find yourself in trouble in a lot of stages. So I wouldn't personally deploy Cold Shot in these situations. You will be better off with a caster. Of course, that does not apply to bosses. We will get there. Now that we have a basic understanding of what Cold Shot can deal with, let's have a closer look at her kit and understand why that is the case. The Hunter trait, as we've seen so far, is solely a downside, made up as a gimmick just to create something new and different. Of course, this brings up a new balancing challenge, so they decided to attach part of this balancing in the trait as well. Hunters always have a 20% attack buff. Well, technically it's a conditional, only activating when the attack uses a bullet. But for Cold Shot, who always hits with basic attacks, this is a 100% uptime buff. This being the case, you can actually consider her as being the same attack level as the Besiegers and Dead Eyes I talked about a while ago. And you might be impressed, but if you look at the numbers, Cold Shot gets the same damage output that Firewatch does. And of course, considering optimal play for both of them. Firewatch is considered by many an amazing boss killer. Her damage output is very, very good, and it's all thanks to her talent, increasing damage dealt to ranged enemies, which is basically every boss in the game. When I first calculated the damage, I was honestly a little bit puzzled. Firstly, because it's the same number as Jessica Alter, but that's a talk for another day. More importantly, second, how can this girl output as much damage as Firewatch? Playing with Cold Shot for the first time, she didn't feel great, her damage felt underwhelming, and creating a good setup for optimal ammo usage was weird to say the least. And although I love messing with numbers, I know that I make lots of mistakes all the time, so I had to compare the ending game, and I have the footage ready to show you that it was not a fluke. Firewatch and Cold Shot actually have the same damage output. Now, let me disclose this real quick, this Firewatch is not completely maxed. She's level 69 and only has module level 1. I don't have mine raised, I'm sorry. That means she's 40 attack points lower than she could be. Still, close enough to get the point across. And if after seeing a few enemies losing basically the same HP to their skills, you still doubt how close they are in game, let me show you an enemy who doesn't have the ranged tag, phase 1 of Patriot. I know, I know, he's overused in showcases, but he is applicable here, bear with me. With the same setup of two mines and getting exact same tiles, Firewatch damage is gone. I really want you to understand how impressive this is for Cold Shot. But now we have to talk about her range, cause this is the first thing that comes to mind when I try to compare these two ops. Yes, Cold Shot has a weird range. This will become an issue in some stages, where you will be forced to use an awkward positioning or give up on playing with her. But let's be realistic here for a moment. The cases where you won't find a good lane with a ranged tile ready to shoot straight into it, or a lane that can at least make use of three squares right in front of Cold Shot, those are edge cases and those do exist. Edge cases exist all over Arknights and they are there to be different from everything else, to give players the opportunity to stop for a second and feel very smart that they figure out something exciting. If you really want only operators who can get past every single edge case and ignore every single situation, I don't know why you're watching 5 star review. So that's my take on her range. It's weird, but not a problem. I should go back for Firewatch for a last comparison though. Firewatch has invisibility, 
which is very strong for dealing with the ranged enemies she wants to kill. And it's obviously an upside cold shot that does not have. I'm not trying to say one is better than the other. I'm trying to say both are amazing. And with that out of the way, let's finally talk about cold shots skill and talent, because they kinda work together. Her trait is the biggest reason why she felt underwhelming to play with at first. Once she starts reloading, you will go from 1.6 attack interval to 3.2. But her talent is here also as a balancing act, just as the 20% extra damage from the trait. It gives Cold Shot an extra 33% damage after not attacking for 2 seconds. This is up every time she has to reload, but of course, by itself, it does not make up for the time spent reloading. And this is a big reason why I believe she works best when dealing with a low pressure elite lane. So she has time to fully reload. So yes, in the best case scenario, you won't even be using her talent. Which is a shame. But it will come up anyway. And when it does, you might as well be happy that you have some help for an empty clip. As for Cold Shot's skill, it's not very exciting. But it is a big number skill. Plus 140% attack for 40 seconds. It comes at the cost of increasing her reload interval from 1.6 to 2.4. It's a steep cost, don't get me wrong. When her clip is full, this doesn't matter. But when her clip is empty, her attack interval will effectively become 4 seconds instead of 3.2. If you use this skill just before she attacks your desired target, she will get an amazing damage I've shown you early through the entire skill duration. And just in case you are curious, here are the damages for her hit during the skill, after a reload, her min DPS during the skill only during the full clip, for the entire skill starting from a full clip, and for the entire skill but starting from an empty clip, as well as her total skill damage when starting from an empty clip. It's not a secret that masteries are important, but in case you are not sold yet, her M3 is 40% higher than her level 7. There is just one last line in her skill I haven't explained yet. Her attacks is low enemies for 1 second. This can come in handy more times than you would expect. At least if you refuse to block. If you're blocking for cold shot, this is irrelevant. Now that we've seen her kit, now that we understand how she works, and we are down bad for looking at Cold Shot for so long, oh, yes. we can finally talk about bosses. How great is Cold Shot in boss fights? Of course, it depends on the boss. And here is how you can tell if she will perform well into a boss fight. Look at someone like Big Bob first. Bob was one of the first bosses added to the game, and he is here to show how strong Skadi's attack is. Skadi can melt Bob, as if he was a simple elite. And that's because Bob has elite stats. 22,000 HP and 800 defense are middling numbers. It's just like killing two defense crushers. And we've seen what Cold Shot does to middling defense elites. She kills them good. Now look at a boss like Minimalist. He also has a middling defense stat, only 600. But unlike Bob, Minimalist has a high HP bar, 55,000 and a shield that takes another 10,000 damage to break. In this clip, I'm using Skadi Alter, we'll talk about buffs in a minute. For now, it's sufficient to see that Cold Shot can't kill Minimalist, and it just comes down to the HP value. Because look at the boss with more defense. Big Ugly has 1000 defense, 400 more than Minimalist but only 40,000 HP. And although she used a little bit of help here as well, 248 attack buff from Skadi, she was able to kill the boss. When we look at bosses, we need to understand that every operator in the game has a damage cap. The defense and res of the boss always plays a part on it. But if the enemy has too much HP, you can't expect a 5 star to solo it. Unless you are crazy like me and like doing low up niche stuff. But in that case, you are not the norm. Shut up. And you don't need to expect anything like that. That's why you have 13 slots in the squad. 
In general, the total damage Cold Shot can ditch with her skill is great. It's enough to get a big chunk out of most bosses. And as we've seen before, her damage is comparable to Firewatch's, someone who has already proven herself to the community. If you play with both of them together, I don't think a lot of stuff will survive, at all. But now we have to talk about buffs. Buffs are harder to notice when you play with a low ASPD op. You certainly can do it, and it will certainly increase Code Shot's damage output. But I can guarantee you, it will not feel as good as using Warfarin on Tachanka or on Axia. I have seen it all. It just won't. Of course, since her skill has a long duration, having Warfarin won't buff the whole skill. But the buff is long enough for Cold Shot's first clip to have basically double damage, which is very nice. The closest I got to trying ASPD buffs was the sponsored drone against the Bobro, but it's not a surprise that ASPD buffs don't feel very good when the reload speed is fixed. She will shoot faster, and at the end of the day she will shoot more, but she will stop between shots to reload, and you can't do anything about that. Not yet at least, who knows what kind of op they release in the future. Bards are a nice pairing for cold shot, but that's not a surprise, bards are good for everyone. Those long duration buff skills don't pack as much punch as Warfarin, but they buff every single shot, and I don't think I have to say this, but hexers are amazing for high defense enemies, because that will turn them into middling defense elites, and that's where cold shot will shine. Let me briefly talk about alternative game modes, integrated strategies and stationary security service. I didn't bring Cold Shot all the way to the end in either of them, but I was happy with the little bit I played with her. The problem is, ASPD buffs are quite common in IS, usually more common than damage, so she might underperform most times compared to other options. As for Triple S, you don't need to give her any ASPD if you don't want to. Stack plus 200% attack on her and she will eat shield guards for breakfast. But you also don't really want cold shot here, because AoE is king when enemy waves can get so chaotic at the end. That's why I play with Pancon. Basically, I would not mind using her, but I would feel she's lacking something. The something? being able to use ASPD in IS and AOE in triple S. With all of that being said, here's my advice to you who is still unsure if you want to raise Cold Shot. She has more than enough damage to be not only useful, but great. You've seen the numbers. She will feel weird to play with for a while, but if that worries you, just ask someone for a support and you can learn like that. ASPD buffs will be kinda wasted on her, but those are somewhat rare still, so it's not a big deterrent. The final call is yours, of course, but don't be scared to raise her. She's fun, she's a beautiful character, her voice actresses did a great job with her lines. Even if I think her EN voice sounds a little bit too young for Cold Shot, the actress is still got the tone right. It's the same thing that happened with Lee who was the first EN voice I liked. Same problem, sounds too young, nothing else. Cold Shot's kit downsides don't make any sense. That is true. But they added some workarounds in her kit to make up for them. It's important to raise the ops you like, because that's how you're going to have fun playing the game. And if you see someone saying she's useless because she's not Aya, Senpai? just know they are past the point of having fun and they are here to play PvP. Something we don't have. Yet, at least. That was Cold Shot. Thank you for watching. Leave me a thumbs up if you liked the review, tell me your thoughts in the comments, and of course, raise your milf. I hope everyone has a very nice day. Peace out.